Hey everyone, welcome to another video from NFI Hammer. In this video, two tabletop beginners will go head to head in a 1000 point battle in Warhammer 10th edition. Alright, let's get started. This is a grudge match, so this is the second time that this Hypercrypt Legion Necron army is going head to head against the Aldari Strands of Fate Detachment Army. If you want to see the first video, I recommend checking that out. It was a bit of a nail biter, but it's not an exact copy. There's some new models that I've painted that you can watch those videos on this channel. So I've got some Necron flayed ones and some other surprises that you'll see. Um, and the Aldari army is bringing out all their best units to try and, you know, get the win this time. Um, so it'll be a real nail biter to see how it ends. The Hypercraft Legion Necron Detachment. I have a Plas Plasmancer who is my Warlord and a Royal Warden. They have the, um, enhancement on the Royal Warden for the Auto Advanced 6 inches which will come in handy in this game. And they're attached to the five Necron Immortals. So the Plasmancer uh, does the crit hit on a five. So they're really a good combo. Um, be better if I had 10. But then over here we have the Scorpec Destroyer and the Scorpec Lord, and they've got the Deep Strike um, uh, add-on onto them so they can uh, come in close when they're coming in from reserves and they're starting off in reserves and the flayed ones are these new units that I've built um, they almost broke me as a person putting them together um, <laughs> but yeah so trying them out and I've also uh, got another spider that I've been working on so these now a unit of two and three scarab beetles that are starting in strategic reserves Canoptic Doom Stalker that does a lot of my killing, heavy lifting, and then I also have three Tomb Blades finally, so these guys will be zipping around, hopefully getting some objectives, and finally the Triax Stalker, which is um, one of my newer units, I've only played with him once, he's got a Heat Ray, which does auto hits, which is really good for Overwatch, so interesting to see if that'll work out this time. The Aldari army today is going to be led by Fuegan. Um, he's with a squad, a five-man squad of fire dragons, recently rebased um, using the texture roller from Greenwork stuff. I think it came out pretty good, so I would recommend that. Uh, we've got a ten-man squad of Dire Avengers. We've got a five-man squad of Warp Spiders, horribly painted and assembled, looking to replace the models and soon. We've got a five-man squad of the Sweeping Hawks, also rebased, came out pretty cool. Uh, we've got a, a, um, a Falcon uh, tank, a Viper, a three Wind Riders, and a Wraith Lord, uh, which I didn't get a chance to paint before this game. And... That's the Eldari army. Missions are from the Leviathan mission deck that I got in the Leviathan box. Um, they were chosen at random. So the deployment is Dawn of War, which is one of the most unoriginal um, basic ones, which is probably good for us as beginners. The primary mission is also very simple. It's basically you get uh, two victory points for each of your own objective markers, five for the no man land and six for the enemies. Um, and then for the mission rule, we got minefields. So if you do an advanced roll and get a six, then that ends up um, causing one mortal wound to the unit. So it might be a bit of fun. It might never happen. I guess we'll find out. So the battlefield looks like this. It's got um, the objective markers are on top of these buildings. And then in the middle, we've kind of accidentally created this cool kill zone arena kind of uh, layout. And then there's the objective markers at the end. 
and with that mission roll, it actually makes you remove the objective marker, so there would be one here. But this is what it looks like. Necron Hypercrypt Legion versus Aldari Strands of Fate Incursion Battle 1000 points Beginner Battle starts now I was really happy with how this battlefield shaped out it looks like a cool like kill arena style battle gladiator thing um, so the deployment was pretty straightforward. We were keeping some units in reserve and, you know, just trying not to, you know, put anything somewhere that can be shot at immediately. Though I did put my Doomstalker kind of illegally on the, um, back there. I don't think it's meant to go over the lip. Let me know in the comments if that's allowed or not. Uh, but it did also become a big easy target for the Aldari to shoot at. So he's positioning his units um, around. Interestingly, he didn't go for any really secondary objectives in this, but he did have lots of attacks at the Doomstalker and my cat made an appearance. End of Eldari deployment and phase and turn one. Um, so going first, I deployed um, most of my army in this uh, corner, um, hiding behind this, this guy here, so that to try and minimize visibility for the death, the, the Doomstalker's shooting ability. Um, I moved Viper up onto the objective marker, the primary objective marker, and moved the Wraith Lord and uh, the Falcon over so that they could all shoot their Bright Lances and Pulse Lasers at the Doomstalker. Managed to do take off six wounds, off his 12, um, but he's still standing tall there. And that's the end of Eldar Turn 1. Casualty of the game. Yeah. Turn one, my flayed ones that use the infiltrate are still just hiding here um, in front of the objective marker there, just kind of watching it. Uh, I moved the two canoptic spiders at the end of Aldari turn one into the Hypercraft Legion deployment and um, I also moved the Triarch Stalker and used the Stratagem to deploy it within three inches. We think that you can deploy it in turn one based on the reading of the rule. Hopefully that is right. If not, let me know in the comments if I've made a mistake. Um, so I drew these two secondary missions. So one is to two victory points for each destroyed unit and um, two victory points if you are behind the enemy unit line, plus one if it's tactical, which is what I'm doing. So I was able to do both of those and get the five victory points. Um, I achieved that by, as I said, using that stratagem, dropping this guy within three inches and then using a focused heat ray. I managed to get one attack through, but with the Melter 4, that was all that it needed. Um, these Tomb Blades, I tried to get behind enemy lines so I could get an extra two victory points, but I couldn't really uh, figure out a way to fly over this and get there. I need like an advance of six, which would cause a mortal wound of one and stuff. So they just did some pot shots and didn't do any damage. But other than that, oh, I did a reanimation roll of two for the Doomstalker, so he's back up to eight. 
Um, but other than that, that's my turn one. End of Eldari, turn two. Um, saw me draw, um, discard one of my um, secondary objectives um, and draw a new one, which is behind enemy lines, but I didn't actually score this round. Uh, we had the Falcon uh, move around to um, take some Overwatch fire doing so, because um, the Triarch Stalker was there. Um, the Fire Dragons jumped out, and the Fire Dragons with Fuegan were able to take out the Triarch Stalker. Uh, the Falcon tried shooting at the Doomstalker up there, um, but was unable to get past the invulnerable save. The Wraith Lord also moved up onto the objective and also shot at the Doomstalker, but was and was able to take off um, a few wounds, took off uh, five wounds, um, it was an eight, took it down to three, but not able to kill it. The Wind Riders moved around the side of the board um, to uh, fire at the uh, Immortals, actually able to kill uh, three of them, three out of five of the Immortals. And the uh, Dire Avengers moved up the board to sit on that objective. They did not fire anything, um, they actually had um, the, what are they called? Scorpec Destroyers were deployed there, but I chose not to fire Overwatch on them because of my cleanse strat, uh, secondary objective, which I claimed the three points for. Um, didn't get any primary points, and so just the one kill on the Triarch Stalker and a bit of damage here and there. And that's the end of Eldar turn two. Necron turn one, reanimation protocols only restored one hit point on this guy, one wound and one wound on these, so I got the worst possible rolls for those two. Um, I moved the flayed ones up here and they were overwatched by your, what are they called? Dire Avengers. Dire Avengers. They did something like 30 attacks and just killed the flayed ones in one go. Um, but then that allowed me to move these up without fear of overwatch. So the Scorpec Lord and Destroyers managed to kill those 10. Um, for my reinforcements, I put the Scarab Swarm here and the Tomb Blades here. And you might be wondering why did I <laughs> do that? Um, Uh, the reason why is my secondary missions. So I got two VP for each corner of the battlefield that I had. So that gave me four VP. And then my other one, I got lucky and it was the tempting target. So the Aldari had to pick between this one that I already controlled or this one that I was about to control as the one. And so he picked the one I was going to control. So that gave me an additional five VP. And then at the start of the round, I had this one, which gave me 5 VP, and this one, which gives you 2 VP. So I had a really good start with 7 VP on primary, and um, 16 VP, sorry, 9 VP on the <laughs> secondary objectives. And for the spiders, um, I just deployed them here, just to give the 6 inch feel no pain aura to the Canoptic Doomstalker because he's going to get probably killed next turn. And that's the end of Necron turn two. End of Aldari, turn three, saw the Fire Prison, uh, actually uh, saw the Wraith Knight 
um, stand ground and shoot and take out the Doomstalker. Um, getting a fate dice as a result, um, so that was a good kill. Um, saw the swooping hawks and the warp spiders drop down. The swooping hawks took out the uh, immortals um, as in the squad, leaving the royal warden and the other leader um, on the table, which the fire dragons mounted up um, and the falcon moved up board to split its fire between the royal warden and the other leader um, to manage to kill both of the um, leaders as independent models and then the warp spiders turned around and shot back at the three um, tomb blades that were there um, killing two and taking one wound um, off the third tomb blade and in terms of scoring objectives not great um, none of the secondary objectives have, uh, were scored um, and primary is just one primary there and that's it Turn three, my Tomb Blade here, I rolled a one for the third time in a row for the reanimation, so I went up to four wounds. I moved him up here to try and get this objective marker, but these scorpions? Warp spiders. Warp spiders did an overwatch and just obliterated it. But with the overwatch out of the way, I was able to drop in the canoptic spider. But because of the screening of the nine inches, I was only able to get one with a little toe into the objective control area. Um, and then likewise, the Scarab Swarm, these guys have zero objective control, so I just kind of put them here, just to kind of slow down the enemy advancement. Um, and then these guys are just chilling, doing nothing on this one. Um, so the reason why I went all in for that was that I had the secure no man's land, so if I control two objective markers, I get the five VP, um, and I couldn't do the extend battle lines because I had nothing left to put in my own one. Though in hindsight, it probably could have done this one and then yet two VP for having one in the other one. So maybe it wasn't the best, but I still got five VP. So it wasn't all bad. End of Eldar turn four. So um, two VP for holding the Wraith Lord, holding this primary objective. And this turn he moved around the corner just to get line of sight on the Scorpec Destroyers. And one of the Bright Lancers went through to kill one Scorpec Destroyer. Uh, we had the Falcon move up um, around the corner to, uh, along, uh, to deploy his Fire Dragons. The, Fire Dragon, uh, Fuegan killed one of the two um, spiders, um, and then the Falcon destroyed the other. And then the Warp Spiders moved up um, and shot on and killed two of the swarms of Scarabs. The uh, Sweeping Hawks um, jumped to the sky to jump down into the enemy deployment zone to help next round, and four secondary objectives we finally started scoring some secondary objectives. Uh, the capture enemy outpost um, we achieved with the sweeping hawks and same for behind enemy lines for 11 points there. So a good round for Aldari. Turn four, it's a very quick one. I just reanimated two wounds which brought a dude back. So my one wound reanimation curse is broken. So my scarab reanimated three, but I was actually wanting it to die so that I only had one unit remaining. You might be like, why would you want that? Well, this Extend Battle Lines um, has this clause that if you only have one unit remaining, then you can get two victory points by holding a no man land objective. So that means my score pack holds two. 
Uh, next turn I'm going to try for this aerial denial by getting six inches within the center of the battlefield. Um, and that is it. Oh yeah, so I charged in to kill these guys in here and then the Aldari player overwatched kindly to kill him as quickly as possible. Otherwise I would have self-destructed to kill one and hopefully kill the other in combat. And that's the end of the turn. End of the Eldari turn five. Um, saw the uh, Wraith Lord um, stands ground and shoot down two of the Scorpic Destroyers. The uh, Falcon moved up um, to perch in the center of the battlefield and took down another one of the um, Scorpic Destroyers, leaving the Scorpic Lord um, the lone survivor. And in terms of objectives, um, scored both um, uh, secondary, although the second one, as long as my Wraith Lord's still standing, end of uh, Necron turn, then he'll be scored, as well as the deploy teleport hammer has already been scored. And that's the end of Eldar, turn five. End of turn five Necron and end of the game. Uh, I was already in a leading position, so I was already up by one, so nothing could really uh, push me from that sweet, sweet victory. Uh, because I am going second, the mission rule means that the player going second doesn't score until the end of their turn, so I ended up just leaving the score pack lord there instead of trying to go for the secondary objective and risk getting overwatched or something. So it was a really good game. Um, I definitely made one big strategic error with deploying my two canoptic spiders in the no man's land. If I could go back in time, I should have deployed them on my home objective because that would prevent the Aldari player scoring their eight point secondary for that. And also would have allowed me to score some other secondaries. For some reason I got it in my head that I needed to kind of like stop them from getting it um, but, and left mine wide open which was just a really bad idea. Um, but other than that, yeah, it was a really fun game, it was a real close nail biter. Uh, I was really worried as he was scoring so many points near the end of the game. Anyway, if this is uh, something that you like, please consider leaving a like, comment and subscribe. It really helps the YouTube algorithms out. And yeah, I'd love to hear how you found this video. Um, leave a comment below. Until next time, catch you later. Bye.